Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we come together today to celebrate ordinary time, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Today, let us remember especially a memorial for Frank Somes, Helena Krumkovia, and a healing for Marie Schmidt. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant that all the works for our, are for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the book of Tobit. Grief stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins, nor for my inadvertent offenses, nor for those of my ancestors. We sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments, so you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among whom you had dispersed us. Yes. Your judgments are many and true in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden the path of truth before you. So now, deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into dust, it is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure so much misery and life and to hear these insults. On the same day at Ecbatana in Media, it so happened that Ragel's daughter, Sarah, also had to listen to abuse from one of her father's maids. 
for she had been married to seven husbands. But the wicked demon Asmodeus killed them off before they could have intercourse with her, as it is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You have already been married seven times, but you have had no joy with any one of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on account of your seven husbands, because they are dead? May we never see a son or daughters of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day as she went into an upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered, saying to herself, No, people would level this insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter, but she hanged herself because of ill fortune. And thus would I cause my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die, so that I need no longer live to hear such insults. At that time, then, she spread out her hands and facing the window, poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of those two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes, so that he might again see God's sunlight and to Mary Regal's daughter, Sarah, to Tobit's son, Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon, Asmodeus, from her. The word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who heedlessly break faith. To you, Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from old. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, he teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven have been married to her. Jesus said to them, are you not misled? Because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. 
When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses and the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have the continuation of the book of Tobit, this wonderful reading. And if you were feeling a little down before you came to Mass today, and then you heard this reading, uh, it helped you to feel a little bit more down until we came to the end. And one of the things that we see is that uh, Tobit and also Sarah are experiencing real difficulties in their life. And there's, they seem like they're overblown in some ways. They're more than most people would expect to experience. But I don't know about you, but there's certain people, you might know these people, you might even be one of them, that just seem to have a lot of bad things happen to them. Do you know anybody like that? It, it's, it's kind of amazing. You know, it's, it seems like there's one challenge after the other. And, I, you know, the Jewish saying is, um, better you than me. But the whole saying is, it's actually a prayer. It's better you than me because God has given you the grace to deal with these so many problems that you might be having. In today's first reading, what we hear is that there are times in our lives when we experience difficulties. That's just the reality. But our Lord is also listening to our prayers. Our Lord is also present to us. And one of the gifts that we have in the book of Tobit is Tobit literally is pouring out his heart. We might remember, this is very much like the prayer of Hannah, this vocal prayer of just pouring out your heart to God. When we have difficulties, it takes us a while to get to that point. Most of us don't immediately pour out our heart to God when we first experience uh, a series of difficulties. We kind of wait until it becomes too overwhelming for us. And we have to give it to God. We really just cannot bear it anymore. And that's what today's first reading is showing us. In today's gospel, again, they're trying to trick Jesus. They're always trying to trick Jesus. It seems like it's, uh, you know, like a game for them in some ways. But as we know, Jesus is not easily tricked. Our Lord's not easily tricked. Now, we can kind of play games in some ways. We can kind of think that we can trick the Lord, but we can't. He knows us. He knows our hearts. He knows our intentions. He loves us. And as we hear in today's reading, that our Lord is the God of the living. This is really a time for us to recognize that our Lord is explaining to us that he is claiming all of life. Not just the life that we experience here on earth, but the life that we will experience in the time after our death, our everlasting hope, our everlasting life. Our Lord is preparing this, us for this. And so, as we listen to today's readings, let us remember, bad things do happen to good people. It seems like some people get more than their fair share of them. But ultimately, our Lord listens to our prayers, listens to our hearts, knows us and loves us, and gives us the gift of the hope of everlasting life. Let's bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let's pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all those who are sick, for those who are in need of God's healing power. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
Let's pray for those who are suffering from any kind of mental issues or from depression. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord Let's pray for our beloved dead, for those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us remember the intentions of the supporters of the Society Little Flower, we pray to the Lord. And let's remember first responders and those in the medical professions and all those who help us in our greatest need, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us now bring our own prayers and our own longings before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to you, to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But if Christ, give me say for everlasting life.
Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady Mount Carmel, St. Therese of Lisieux, go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Enjoy the day. Thank you.